I've had a few comments on my digital voltmeter that I fitted to my Kawasaki Z1 Super 6. So I thought I'd put this video together to show you how it's done. It's quite a straightforward task really. You can buy the simple electronics on eBay and fit them into your console or buy a new console from Z Power and fit it into that to keep your original one. It's always exciting when a doorbell rings, especially when it's the postman dropping off parcels. And this time it's from Z Power Kawasaki. So I'm hoping it's the idiot lights they're, sent they're sending me down to convert into a voltmeter. Let's get the packet open and have a look. Perfect, this is just the job. What we're gonna do is take out the old brake warning light and fit the voltmeter in the gap. I'm gonna be using my Dremel with some carbide burrs to gradually remove the plastic from behind the warning light. And the ones I need to use are the carbide ones with a flat bottom. This is the style you need with a flat bottom and a sharp corner so I can get right up to the edges. What I've got to do is gradually remove that raised plastic edge there in black to reveal the red light underneath and then gradually grind the red light away until it falls out. It's really important to hold the Dremel square and also don't move too fast, gentle motions backwards and forwards, like a dentist drilling a tooth. It's a really good idea to check regularly as well to make sure you're not going too deep and it's really important it's even all the way around. You don't want to dig into the clear glass on the front. And here it is about halfway. You can still see the red in the centre. And after a bit more trimming the red gets bigger and bigger and eventually it actually becomes loose and you can hook it out with a small screwdriver. With the red bit out, you can see clearly through the plastic on the front. And you can also see where I've scratched the black slightly. So we can easily touch that with paint later. That's not a problem. The next thing to do is to buff off the white lettering from the underside of the clear front. To do this, I use my little tiny buffing wheel and some Solvol metal polish. And very carefully on a low speed, polish away the white lettering. It's really important you don't press too hard as you'll burn the plastic. And there we go, the lettering's all removed and it's see-through. So the next thing I need to do is to touch up the black at the bottom where I scratched it off a little bit enthusiastically with the Dremel. And here it is with the torch and you can really see it shows up. I use this PJ1 Fast Black. It's epoxy based and sticks really well to plastic. So what I do is spray a bit on an old cap and use a brush to apply it delicately to the underside of the console. I painted it on quite thick with a brush to make sure none of the red glow strays through underneath. I noticed I missed a bit right in the corner, so I just put another blob on. There we go, perfect. Well, that's the modifications finished for the actual cover. And I've just got another parcel come through the door and it's the electronics for the inside. I got these on eBay for just over three pounds, amazing value. These are really cool gauges and ideal for the old classic look because they're like LED red glow, not the LCD. So it's actually nicer. When you connect it up to battery, it looks proper old school. I offer up the display to the console and it's exactly the right size, except there's two lugs sticking out that holds the two screws to hold it in place. Now we don't need those, so I'm going to snip those off with my side cutters. With the two lugs cut off, I offer it up into the light console. There's plenty of room and it drops down in perfectly. I use a hand of a paintbrush to hold it tight while I have a quick look and then connect it up to a battery to see it glow. I'm well pleased with that. The next thing to do is to glue the display in place. I use this Permatex Ultra Grey and Ultra Black. It's like a silicone adhesive and it's very good, but you could use a hot glue gun or anything you like really. I squeeze a bit of silicone onto the handle of my paintbrush and use that to dab it in place, being very careful not to disturb the display. But if you do disturb the display, it's ever so easy to slide it back in place using a small screwdriver. 
Once the adhesive has dried, the last thing to do is to fit the cowl back on the bike, feed the wires into the headlight and connect up to a suitable earth and switch to feed. Then you have a fully operational voltage meter. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe in case you miss any of my new videos because I'm going to be doing a lot more on this sort of thing with old classic bikes, including a full review on my Viper V10 coming soon.